Good Sunday morning. It is Pastor Paul Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. We thank you for sharing these moments with us. We hope you will enjoy the service of worship and that God will be exalted and the church will be encouraged. The word of the Lord says, suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said, and he spoke. And he showed them the wounds in his hand and in his side. May we pray. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us at Calvary. Now we ask that you empower us to go into the world to tell them we serve a risen Savior. And he lives, he lives, he lives within our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Take control, Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, fountain singers. Lead us into the presence of Almighty God through and by song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We've come this morning to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise, for truly he deserves it all. He's been good to us, so much better than we deserve. Yet he deserves our praise. Listen. My hallelujah belongs to My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs 
Thank you to our fountain singers. You always know how to bless our hearts. It is nothing like the ministry of music. And we're just so grateful how you always usher us into the presence of Almighty God. We thank God for not only our singers, but our awesome musicians. Thank you so very much for lending your talents and your gifts to Almighty God. Today, I ask that you would look with me in this second Sunday of Easter at John's Gospel, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31 from the New Living Translation. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the wounds in his hands and put my fingers in them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. And look at my hands. Put your hands into the wounds in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. For the next few moments, I want to couch my words around this topic. Believe. Believe. Just one word. Believe. These words uh, that we have heard written from this text are so powerful because they remind us of the hand of God and how God has used Jesus to do just what he came on earth to do. As we find ourselves in the printed text, it lets us see that that beloved disciple John gives us a recording of what has taken place. We see, first of all, that it is the Sunday evening and they are behind locked doors because they are afraid of the Jewish leaders. Now, remember, it was earlier in that day when the women went to the tomb and found out that Jesus was not there. It was earlier that day that John, the beloved disciple who we find written in the text, he goes and he runs ahead of Peter, but he stops just shy of going in. But when Peter finally gets there, he makes his way in. Some have said this lets us know either one or two things that that Peter was a little bit older than John or that uh, Peter had some knee problems and John was still as fast as always. It also reminds us that whenever we're eager to see the Lord, we can run faster than we've ever ran before. John is running to make sure that things are true and that it is exactly as the women said. And so now we find it is the evening of that day. The disciples are locked behind doors, uh, locked in walls, locked in rooms away from everything and especially the Jewish leaders. This lets us see that many times you and I are just like these uh, disciples. We're locked in. We're locked into our thinking. We're locked into our behavior. We're locked in the patterns and behaviors when God is trying to set us free. But notice they're locked in. They're locked in because they have fears. 
How many times have you and I locked ourselves in because of our fears, our phobias? We've locked ourselves in simply because we didn't want to be found. We have locked ourselves in because uh, we were afraid of what might happen if we came out. These disciples remember that they were head and front. They were front and center. They were leading the pack with Jesus and they were always closely behind. It's now their savior, the one in whom they've been following, has been crucified, buried. And, and now it is a rumor of his resurrection. And in this story, we don't find it, but it's also rumored that uh, that that the leader of their day had paid guards who were supposed to have been outside of the sepulcher to say that uh, they fell asleep and the disciples carried his body away. These disciples find themselves locked behind doors, locked in a room, locked away from everything and everybody because of their fears. And as they find themselves locked in this room, Jesus does what he always does. He comes to see about his disciples. I think it's always amazing in this text that we see that uh, Jesus uh, uh, is not seen immediately, but now all of a sudden he appears to them in this room. That is amazing. The doors are locked, but Jesus still makes his way in. That becomes a great illustration for all of us, even though sometimes people may try to make an attempt to lock Jesus out. He always finds his way in. How some of us uh, think that uh, we can hide from God, but God is always ever present. We find ourselves not wanting uh, Jesus to see how we're down and out and how we find ourselves feeling like it is hopeless. Jesus shows up. Oh, that's a great point that all of us need to be reminded of that Jesus will always show up even when you think there is no way for him to make his way in. Have you ever been in a situation where it seems like Jesus just could not get in? There was no room for him uh, because we were filled with doubt. There was no room for him because we were filled with despair. There was no room for him because we had shut ourselves away from the possibilities. There's no way he can get in. But Jesus shows up anyway. The text lets us see that they were behind locked doors, but Jesus was standing among them. And secondly, what he does is he says, Peace be with you. Isn't that just like Jesus? Wherever Jesus shows up, it might be chaos. Wherever Jesus shows up, there might be something going wrong. But Jesus is the author and the prince of peace. He walks right up to where they are, walk through the walls, and he says, peace be with you. Notice he wants them to know God has given you the peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. God has given you the peace to know that everything is going to be all right. It's nothing to be afraid of because I am here to give you peace. In this world, we need peace over in Europe. We need peace in Africa. We need peace in Asia. We need peace all over this world, just like they needed it then. We need peace today. We need Jesus to walk into our situation. And as he says peace, he shows them the wounds in his hand. He shows to them his side. And they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. They knew it was Jesus. Remember, they had seen him on that cruel cross of Calvary. It appears as though even in Jesus resurrected state, he still has the wounds of the past. You know, my brothers and sisters in all of our lives, even though God may have taken us to another place, there are still wounds of our past. I can remember as a child. I found myself doing something that my mom and my dad told me not to do, and that is to throw rocks. I was throwing rocks at one of the neighbors and a rock hit me right in the forehead. And even though I am now saved, even though I've been called into ministry, I still have a wound with a slight indention in my forehead, a wound of the past. 
I have a wound in the past of when I had my right knee replaced. I have a wound in the past of when I had my left knee replaced. There are wounds that all of us carry. There are scars that we have, but the scars are to remind us of the pain we've been through, but it's to remind us that Jesus can turn our scars into stars. Notice it says that Jesus shows them the wounds in his hands. He shows them the wounds in his side. He wants them to make no mistake about it. It is me. It is genuinely me. It's not a ghost. It is me. It is not a spirit. It's me, the spirit of God. It is I. I am here with you. Make no mistake about it. I am he that were dead, but I'm now alive. And again, he tells them, peace be with you. Now, Jesus tells them peace twice because he wants them to know that there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, my brothers and sisters in this life, when God asks us to do that, which we're not familiar with, when God asks us to do that, which we have never done before, there's always some degree of fear and impatience because we go like, God, I know you're not asking me to do that. I've never done that before. But guess what? God always calls us to do what we've never done before because we're not doing it in our strength. We're doing it in his strength. Notice the text says that they were uh, they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And after he tells them peace, he says, uh, as the father has sent me, thirdly, I am now sending you. He said, God sent me here for a purpose, and now I'm sending you for a purpose. We must remind ourselves that Jesus came to be our chief example of obedience. He became our chief example of the will of the Father being manifested. Whatever the Father said, Jesus did. And he's saying, as the Father has sent him, he is now sending us. God sent Jesus into the world. He sent him with power. He sent him with everything that was needed. And now Jesus says, as the father sent me, I'm now sending you. I could only imagine the disciples are saying, you're sending us? No, we're locked behind doors and you're sending us out there? No, we're hiding from these people and you're sending us out there? No, we don't want to see these people. They crucified you. What will they do to me? Jesus has to show them again the wounds in his hands, the wounds in his side, to let them know that I was wounded for your transgressions. I was bruised for your iniquity. And now the chastisement of your peace is upon me. And now I'm giving you peace. Jesus sends them out. He says, I'm sending you. And then he does in the passage what he and the Father and the Spirit does at the creation of time. The text says he breathes on them. In the book of Genesis, it says that after God made Adam and after he made Eve, he breathed into their nostrils and they received the breath of life. Notice Jesus breathes into them. He breathes his spirit into them. He says, now you have the breath of God. Now you have the force of God. Now you have the power of God. In the Old Testament, that word breath is the word uh, ruach. It's a forceful sending out of air. In the New Testament, that word is pneuma. That is God's new spirit that he is pouring into all of us. The newness, the freshness of what he has sent us out to do. He breathes on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. You know, God's spirit is there for us. All we have to do is receive him. He's always been made available. And now Jesus breathes the spirit on them and he says, receive them. And when you receive the spirit, it's then you have the power to forgive sins. You have the power to say, I forgive you for what you've done. You know, too often times we say there are some people who just don't know how to forgive. It might be because they don't have the spirit of God, because the spirit of God is the spirit of forgiveness. Because Jesus forgave us of our sins. 
And as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That gives us power to be forgiven and power to forgive. And when you and I are forgiven and know how to forgive, we liberate people and we liberate ourselves and we can now come from behind locked doors. Once again, the text says that Jesus is now uh, noticing that his disciples are together. And this time Thomas is with them. The first time Thomas was not there. And Thomas was known as the twin. And, and so now uh, Thomas is there with them in the room because Thomas, after the first time he heard the, the hearsay testimony that he has risen from the dead. And Thomas said, I won't believe unless I can see it with my own eyes, unless I can feel it with my own hands. And now Jesus shows up with Thomas being present to let Thomas know that you are included. My brothers and sisters, you are included. This text lets us see there are some of us who were not there when the others were there, but we have come later on on the scene. But that still lets us know that you are included. I am included. We must remind ourselves God includes us all, even if we were not there at the beginning. We're there now. And so we're included. That means we get the same blessings. We get the same privilege. We get the same spirit as those who came before us because we are now included. Oh, I love the way God does this. God lets Thomas know simply because you were not there the first time you still included. That lets all of us know in the kingdom of God that simply because you came in before somebody else came into the kingdom doesn't make you any better. It just meant that you heard the message before they heard it, but they've heard the message and we're all on equal footing. We have to remind ourselves there are no big eyes and no little U's in the kingdom of God. We are all brothers and sisters filled with the same equity, filled with the same love, filled with the same quote unquote forgiveness. Even though we have different functional responsibilities, God loves us equally. He loves us the same. And so now he says, uh, I have seen the Lord. It's amazing how Thomas now sees and Thomas says, I'm going to run and tell that. You know, wouldn't it be awesome if all of us would do that? So Thomas sees him. Thomas is locked in the room with the other disciples. Jesus comes and sees them like he does the first time. And notice he's consistent again. He says, peace be with you. Peter gets a chance to put his hand. Thomas gets a chance to put his hand uh, on the wounds of Jesus. And he realizes it is real. And then Jesus says something so powerful. He says, believe. Just as you believe. Blessed are those who will never see, who will never touch me, but they'll believe. That's all of us, my brothers and sisters. We were not there when all of this happened, but we believe. Why? Because we have the testament. We have the testimony. We have the story that Jesus went to Calvary's cross. He hung his head. He bled and died. But early on that third day morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And now we believe just as they believe. My brothers and sisters in this world, we got to believe. We got to believe that God is who he says he is. We got to believe. We got to believe that his word is as powerful then as it is right now. It is as powerful now as it was then. His word is always powerful because his word is sharper than any two edged sword. We have to believe. He says, blessed are those of us who believe who were not there and who didn't see. That tells us we're blessed. Oh, we believe the story. And not only that, but we share the story. And we still are sending people out by two. We must make sure just as Jesus sends them out by two that we go out to encourage. We didn't put our hands in his wounds, but we know he died. We were not there to see the crucifixion, but we were there uh, in our mind spiritually to see the resurrection. Thomas exclaimed, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. Too often times in this world, we don't believe what we say we believe, because if we believed it, we'll live it out in our actions, our words and our deeds. If we say we believe, let's live like we believe. Let's put our faith and our trust in God. Let's reach out and help our brothers and sisters to let them know all you have to do is believe. Have faith as a size of a grain of a mustard seed. You can speak to that situation and it will be gone. The disciples saw Jesus do great works. 
They saw the miraculous signs that he had done. And the story was ever told, it says that there's not enough books to contain the volumes of the miracles that Jesus performed. But I'm so happy that you and I can believe. All you have to do is believe that God sent his son Jesus and that Jesus went to Calvary's cross and he died and he rose from the dead. And because of that belief, we can pass it on to the next person. We must tell everybody about the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We must tell everybody that he loves us. We must tell everybody the peace of God be with you. We must tell everybody how God grants to us that peace that surpasses all of understanding, that peace that will keep you in the storm, that peace that will keep you when it seems like there's chaos all around you, that peace that will keep you simply because we believe. And when you and I believe, it then takes us to a whole nother place in our lives. It takes us to the place that God would have us to be. And that is in his presence. Today, if you don't know Christ, all you have to believe in the gospel message. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. You got to believe. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. For God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You and I have to believe. When we believe in this gospel, believe in the power of God's word, it becomes transformative, not only in our lives, but transformative in the world and everybody around us. Today, if you don't know Christ, just accept him. Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and save me. Today, if you've already done that and you want us to pray for you and pray with you, we'll be happy to pray for you and pray with you. Today, we want to remind you that if you love to be a part of this ministry, you'd like for us to help you and to join with you on your Christian walk. Email us at join at the fountain of Today, if you'd like for us to pray for you and pray with you, just email us at prayer at the fountain of if you want to become a part of this fellowship, just let us know. We'll be more than happy to meet you where you are and to let you know that God loves you. And because of your belief, you can have that same eternal life that's promised to us all. Today, we do hope and pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and that he will make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. And then we can go out by twos to tell the good news that we have met the Savior and he has changed our lives. Today, I want to pray for you and pray with you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for all of our brothers and our sisters and those who've been watching. We pray that you will send forth more people into the kingdom. Father, send us out by twos that we might share the good news of the gospel. Help us to tell men, women, boys and girls about your unconditional love. You love us because you love us. And you sent your son Jesus to down Calvary's cross for our sins. So have your way in our lives. Do great and precious miracles for us. And we promise to give you the praise. Thank you for your mercies that are new every day. Thank you for blessing us to be in your presence. Now, God, we ask that those who are saying pray for me, that you will touch them, touch their situation. Let them know that all things are possible if they only believe. Father, we believe in you. We believe in your word. We believe that you still use men and women, boys and girls to do what you said you would do. Now have your way in our lives and we'll be careful to give you the praise. And now unto him, the great shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless, preserve and keep you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. May he bless you in your leisure, your labor, your joys and your sorrows and give you hope for today as well as tomorrow. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Please know you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And until the next time, there's a place you can go where peaceful waters always flow. And that's at the fountain. In this year of 2022, God has a blessing in store just for you. And I'll see you on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Yeah.